listeners, welcome to Tal Radio powered by Touch a Life Foundation. As Albert Einstein once said, once you stop learning, you start dying. Today's guest is a firm believer in this ethos. We welcome Vishal Mimani, the founder of Fly Higher, a non-profit dedicated to imparting life skills to underprivileged children. In addition to FHI, his career spans diverse roles from managing a copper manufacturing plant to trading non-ferrous metals across India. He is also the founder and CEO of Primate Advisory, a platform for facilitating creative problem solving and innovative solution. A warm welcome to Mr. Vishal Mimani. Thank welcome you so to much, you, sir. Thank for this welcome and for the beautiful introduction as well. So I'm looking forward to this conversation. Uh, me too. Uh, for, for me, sir, um, I'm delighted to know that uh, you had actually uh, started two ventures together. So you had started FHI along with your um, primary uh, primate advisory as well. So you are an entrepreneur and a social entrepreneur at the same time. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's a very delightful journey. Uh, they do uh, come uh, uh, mingle with each other quite a bit. Uh, and it helps me uh, do either, play a good role in either of the uh, positions uh, well, actually. So yes, it's quite delightful and a beautiful experience. It's it's great to know, sir. So today we'll be focusing a bit on your journey with FHI. Yeah. And um, I would like to know, like, what was the one instance that prompted you to start FHI? Uh, so I, I mean, I'm just going to generally talk about my early experiences. Yeah. Uh, uh, which uh, inspired me to start uh, Fly Higher. And uh, so my early experience were deeply influenced, you know, by a keen uh, awareness uh, of the gaps between uh, the current education system and uh, the skill training, which is available, uh, especially mm -hmm. for underprivileged children. Yeah. So uh, growing up, I uh, witnessed uh, firsthand uh, how uh, access to quality uh, education and extracurricular activities could make a significant difference in a child's future. And uh, I could actually take it up on myself as well, where I realized that, you know, if I just had a better uh, access to skills, I would have mm -hmm. probably charted a different uh, a route as far as my career is concerned as well. Uh, yeah. So this realization was uh, further reinforced uh, during my volunteer work uh, with uh, several community centers uh, where uh, I saw the potential uh, that, uh, you know, so many children had, but mm -hmm. just that they didn't have the access uh, to uh, several tools uh, that could make uh, their career and their life ahead much more brighter. Uh, mm -hmm. And a specific inspiration uh, to, to start Fly Higher came from, a, I would say, a pivotal moment when mm -hmm. I met a, a very bright young girl um, and her name was uh, Simran, uh, mm -hmm. you know, at one of the community centers where I used to go to volunteer. Uh, she had immense potential, but, uh, you know, just lacked the resources uh, and the guidance, uh, you know, to channel her, I would say, the talents effectively. Um, her story was uh, probably the catalyst for both, uh, you know, my co-founder of Fly Higher, that is Pritam and me, uh, to realize that many children had similar situations where they were brimming with, uh, I would say, a lot of talent and a lot of energy, uh, but mm -hmm. just needed a little push uh, and a guidance. And that's where kind of Fly Higher came into being. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we try to bridge that gap between uh, the uh, current education system and to be able to make these children far more, you know, confident, speak better, mm -hmm. you know, work in teams better, communicate better, uh, think out of the box and be more exposed to more such concepts so that it becomes better for them ahead in life uh, just as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful um, start to your story of uh, FHI. And um, I was just finding it uh, really interesting because um, when, as far as skills are concerned, yeah. um, even um, yeah. we might be lacking in just one skill. For example, mm -hmm. if you're lacking in communication, it'll be yeah. very difficult for us to, we, we might have so many brilliant ideas in our mind that it'll be so difficult for us to communicate. And yeah. just having that one crucial skill of communication, it just makes life a lot easier, a lot yeah. accessible, like you said. And um, with that, I would like to proceed uh, to ask, uh, we yeah. are talking about skill development and skill training. Yeah. Um, with the 
you know, the technology is vastly getting different day by day and we are getting AI driven technology and people are pivoting towards it gradually. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see uh, skill development and skill training changing with these uh, changing technologies? Uh, it's very important uh, and a very vital question for the, uh, you know, the day and age that we are in right now. Um, you know, with the uh, rapid advancements of, uh, you know, AI and technology, uh, the landscape of skill training and undergoing is undergoing a tremendous amount of transformation. Uh, the future mm -hmm. of, uh, of, of, of skill training will likely be characterized by personalized uh, adaptive uh, learning experiences. Uh, that uh, leverages uh, AI uh, to mm. cater to individual needs and learning styles. You know, so mm. over the course of period, and I'm sure you would agree as well, we all have different learn learning styles. Uh, yeah. Somebody uh, sees and learns better. Somebody, you know, can read and learn better. Somebody listens and learns better. So yes, technology helps us uh, to bridge up that gap and also make us aware uh, just as well. So uh yeah. So, uh, you know, yes, virtual and augmented reality could play a significant role uh, in uh, creating, I would say, immersive learning environments, making education more uh, engaging and effective. Mm -hmm. uh, for children to thrive in an AI uh, world, uh, certain 21st century skills will be essential. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, this could be uh, critical thinking, problem solving, uh, digital literacy, uh, creativity, emotional intelligence, adaptability. So all of these would, of course, be, and, and that's probably kind of like where we come in in, in play just as well. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's a very evolving space uh, as far as technology is concerned and extremely important for uh, the youth to be able to be attuned with what's happening around uh, them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious about one thing. Uh, how do you curate the syllabus for your skill um, uh, imp uh, while, while you're imparting skill sets? Uh, yeah. How do you curate your syllabus? Uh, so, Pavitra, um, we do have several uh, advisors with us uh, who have, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I would say, the experience and the knowledge uh, in uh, either uh, on a more psychological level uh, to uh, know how kids work, uh, as well mm -hmm. on the other hand, uh, where uh, they understand what is the kind of uh, content which really works as far as children are concerned and to be able to uh, maintain their attention span. Uh, mm -hmm while keeping them extremely interested and engaged. Uh, so it's very beautiful how Fly Higher comes about where uh, our programs are all activity-based. Uh, mm -hmm. So children just love to engage themselves in activities and learn a yeah. concept because it, it stays with them and they're participating in it rather than just uh, having someone come in and talk to them about it. So, yeah, uh, yeah I think probably our... our uh, um, our different advisors, our different consultants who are there with us who help us continuously keep relooking at uh, our content uh, and um, curate it in a certain ways. And fortunately now, probably Pritam and I, having spent a couple of years, we also know what works and, uh, and have a not. bit of, I would say, an expert in uh, curating the content that we take to the children. Wonderful. And um, another question in the same line or in the same topic is... Um, so you run across India. It's a pan-India organization. Yeah. And um, so is your syllabus localized to each region? Is it very specific? Uh, so then to bridge any communication that, gap? We do create. So that's why with our experience, it helps us to understand what is it something which, uh, because there are a lot of variables. Um, mm -hmm. It's not just, uh, let's say, a language. It could be sometimes age. It's sometimes mm -hmm. it's also about the space that we are uh, going to. It's the number yeah. of children that we are catering to. Uh, plus, uh, again, since we are uh, Pan-India and uh, it's a volunteer-run organization, uh, so mm -hmm. different volunteers will have different uh, skill sets themselves too. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, we try to build a curriculum or our, our, our set of, uh, you know, kind of activities such that it caters largely to um, uh, most places. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. the local leaders that we have, they would then adjust it accordingly based on their ground reality. Okay. Okay. And uh, is is it language specific as well? For no, each it's region? not language specific. It can be. Okay. Uh, yeah. So because it's not like something that we are speaking in terms of a recorded content. So it's okay. all live. So you know. So it's taken care of by the local 
representatives in local languages if need be okay that's that's wonderful yeah. um and um, so you have uh, established both uh, primate advisory as well as uh, fhi uh, i think within a span of i think there's hardly much difference to the uh, founding time of each yes if yes, i'm not true. wrong yeah and that's also and... when i actually had moved to bangalore from calcutta so ah, okay. multiple things happened <laughs> together so yeah yeah that's a lot of things together yes it must have been a quite challenging period and um, i would like to uh, know a little more about what were the challenges you specifically yeah. uh, faced when it came to yeah. fhi um as far as fly hire is concerned uh, the most uh, challenging aspect of founding and uh, growing uh, fly hire has uh, always been sustaining i think uh, uh, securing sustainable funds funding mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah. resources you know so in the uh, early stages it, it was difficult to convince uh, potential uh, donors uh, and partners for uh, for the long term impact and viability of our initiatives you know because mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's not something so easily measurable um, you know it's not like you are writing an exam and you get marks and you can measure how much you got so it is always yeah. very tough uh, to convince someone to do that uh, so overcoming this required a combination of uh, perseverance of uh, a little bit of i think clarity in our communication uh, of our vision and uh, demonstrating uh, early success through uh, pilot uh, programs so you know once you're there and you're really doing things people can see what you're doing the kind of impact they have if they've attended these programs they can see the kind of effect it is having on the children the kind of responses it has on schools, on the orphanages, on the shelter homes that we visit, uh, the kind of response that our volunteers uh, also uh, share as far as their growth, as well as, you know, what they have observed and seen um, in, in these programs. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yes, that was one. Uh, of course, uh, another significant challenge was uh, building a team uh, that uh, shared the same passion and commitment uh, to the cause that we have. Uh, yeah. that involved, uh, you know, just meticulous uh, kind of selection processes, uh, continuous, uh, you know, so-called training and fostering a culture of uh, mutual respect and collaboration. Uh, so uh, by uh, highlighting the impact of our work and celebrating small victories, uh, we managed to keep the team uh, motivated and aligned uh, with our vision. Um, so, so over the years, we've built some amazing, amazing uh, leaders. We have a beautiful structure uh, with Fly Hire. It being a pan-India organization, we need to have systems in place. Uh, we have uh, national leaders, we have regional leaders, we have uh, city leaders, and uh, each one knowing what their role is. Uh, so creating that structure was extremely important. And uh, we continuously churning some amazing um, leaders, you know. So yes. It's, it's been challenging, but very, very fruitful. As it's <laughs> That's wonderful to know. And I would like to know, um, how is the relationship between the two organizations that you have, uh, uh, you know, you're uh, uh, such a major part of? So is the relationship it, uh, between them very, um, what do I say, symbiotic? Okay, first time I'm happy you've done quite a, you're quite a bit of research so <laughs> so that that's great uh, so you know so at, at private advisory um, I I work with uh, corporates I work with uh, you know mm. individuals just as well on a more b2b and a b2c level uh, conducting a lot of uh, training and implementation of uh, creative thinking techniques uh, you know primarily a lot to do with design thinking and then several mm -hmm. uh, techniques as far as uh, brainstorming and uh, finding creative problem solving techniques uh, as far as creative thinking is concerned. Uh, so yes, all of it just kind of like comes together because I'm doing the same thing continuously on a day to day basis at Fly Hire just as well, uh, using design thinking to ensure that uh, the experience uh, uh, of be it the children, of be it the uh, schools that we're visiting or be it the volunteers uh, uh, is, is continuously looked at and and uh, we kind of like have a wow experience as far as they are concerned. Um, so yes, it does come plus a lot of creative problem solving because uh, an organization like uh, ours, um, be it uh, our programs, be it execution of those programs, uh, be it a curriculum, be it fundraising, um, you know, it all requires a lot of continuous creative problem solving. So it just comes beautifully together, but I just feel that I'm doing one job actually instead of having two organizations. 
so yes it comes uh, yeah and it, it, it's it's a very fruitful and fulfilling experience so, yeah that's so uh, wonderful so something that we have mentioned a uh, couple of times throughout this interview is yeah. uh, fundraising yeah. and i would like to know what are some of the creative ways in which you have uh, you know managed to create funds for fhi okay um, so you know when we started fly higher and it took us a little time to get uh, traction uh, but mm-hmm. uh, soon we suddenly realized that there were so many people across the country who were also looking for a platform like this uh, where they wanted to do some social good they wanted to uh, they had time over the weekend uh, to participate in such activities and schools were also available over the weekend and they did not know much of what to do with the children mm-hmm. in the, on the mm-hmm. weekend because during the mm-hmm. week yes they were busy with their school and their education but over the weekends it was not known what to do so we really filled a gap which was available uh, having said that when we opened up a platform for uh, volunteers to come in uh, we have thousands of people who register with with us uh, you know on a day to day basis there are like hundreds of people who you know and across the country who register so but we could not entertain or encourage everybody to be a part of our organization uh, mm-hmm. so we did uh, you know kind of like introduce something called a, a contribution that they needed to make uh, to become a part of fly higher so this mm-hmm. helps us in multiple fronts number one is only people with the right intent would pay and come to us second yeah, it also absolutely. took care of some amount of funding that we require on a day to day basis uh, as far as our organization is concerned so it yeah. takes care of both committed volunteers uh, who are there for the right reasons uh, and the second it got some uh, funding in the system uh, just as well uh, of course it's it's a we take a, a 500 rupee which is a lifetime uh, a fee that uh, people pay but uh, yeah that was something which kind of like a creative because uh, who could think of that a volunteer would pay to volunteer uh, but yeah. it really keeps the crowd really really uh, very filtered um, mm. We have mm. never had any problem across the country of someone coming in and misbehaving or not being, mm. Uh, mm. you know, really uh, wanting to do what we're doing because they've committed mm. themselves by having contributed. So that, yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Because um, like you said, the intention is very clear while uh, while they're participating in the organization as a volunteer. Mm. So that's a wonderful uh, and very interesting topic. Yeah. Um, uh, another thing that I would like to talk about is, uh, which I stumbled across while learning about uh, how your story about FHI, was mm-hmm. that uh, you have always been um, involved with children and uh, you have always wanted to um, give back to them. So I think um, it, it has always been at the uh, as a part of your journey, right? It was not a sudden pivot to this. And it has always been, you have always been interested in this uh, particular thing. And um, I would like to know if you have certain heartfelt uh, success stories or something that you would like to share, um, which you felt that which is so rewarding to have uh, found an organization like this. I mean, there are just so many over the years, I mean, and rewarding stories, uh, one, of course, with uh, well, all the children that we worked with, uh, once we started with somebody and then later on, after maybe six months, the kind of confidence and communication that they had was absolutely tremendous. Uh, and that uh, has far reaching effects as far as their own life and their career paths are concerned. Um, and a lot of rewarding experiences as far as volunteers are concerned too. I mean, the kind of like uh, messages and the kind of, uh, uh, you know, heartfelt uh, um, um, kind of interactions I have with people, how much it's like touching lives uh, of people across the country. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Like I said, like, so over the years, uh, Flyer has numerous uh, rewarding uh, moments. Um, One of the most uh, memorable stories was probably for me, uh, this uh, boy called Ram and I met him in Bangalore. I was interacting with uh, him at a community center that we were there. Um, Came up with very low self-esteem, you know, a lot of academic struggles and uh, just to kind of like a lot of through, you know, personalized uh, mentoring and, and support. Um, he just kind of like, you know, you could see a different person kind of like shine out of him. You know, there's so a tremendous amount of potential. Started uh, kind of like really loving his uh, academics um, and started really flourishing in, in these kind of subjects that he was struggling in. 
uh, far more confident, communicate so much uh, better. Uh, you know, he was hesitant in in like you know working in in teams, and then he was now suddenly become the most prominent member of the, of teams. Uh, you know, wanting to become a, a leader of 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 uh, such as well. So so many such kind of like stories, it's just beautiful and 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 extremely rewarding for all of us who have interacted with uh, kids and and made such an impact. Uh, in their lives so yeah wonderful beautiful it's um it's kind of like how i'm visualizing it is when you have a road and you have so much of boulders you're essentially just you know uh picking those boulders away and making it easy for the person to walk or ride and it's just uh, the whole everything gets easier once those small roadblocks are kind of removed and it's just so uh, heartfelt and wonderful to know this uh, small story and i'm sh- uh, th- i'm sure that our listeners would have enjoyed listening to it as, as well um and next i would like to talk a bit about collaboration collaboration is i think um, is very integral to any nonprofit organization mm-hmm. i would like to know um has uh, fhi collaborated with other organization and how has it impacted your work has it you know led to bigger things firstly flyhave is all about collaboration only okay okay <laughs> because uh, as you probably would have understood from this conversation so you know we are not yeah. housing the kids we are not yeah, like yeah. taking care of their day to day uh you know food and medical needs and and shelter etc uh we go to several organizations which are uh, orphanages which could be shelter homes which could be after uh, you know kind of like um, after classes which uh, a lot of these underprivileged kids have so uh, for us across the board in every city it's all about collaborating with different different organizations which are doing phenomenal mm-hmm. amount of uh, the work uh and we bridge a gap for them which they have existing in their system uh Wonderful. so it, it's just beautiful how collaborations work and we are a platform which is all about collaboration um yeah. you know um, so yes i mean the, the biggest of course collaboration is all the schools that we are uh, collaborated with so yeah. yeah do you uh, go through some sort of a selection process for the schools where you want to be present yes pavita so what happens is that uh, Uh, there are times when we do an initial uh, training session there or a workshop there okay. uh, we kind of like kind of then uh, assess i would say uh, how um, the authorities of the school are really treating us and they are really looking at us at just filling a certain 2 3 4 hour time uh, for the kids or they are looking at actually us benefiting the kids through our programs uh mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. the selection process has uh, taken time for us to kind of filter and uh, assess mm-hmm. that um, uh, where we are given uh, enough prominence and uh, importance as far as our programs and they understand the benefits or uh, the long term far reaching benefits that we have on the kids uh, so once that is kind of like uh, done then we continue with those uh, specific uh, centers of the schools that we work with so, yeah okay that's wonderful and we'll um, wind up this interview with one last question yeah. and i would like to know a bit about the future that you envision for uh, fly higher yeah well firstly uh, i think we're in an absolutely beautiful space i totally personally love it and everybody who's connected with us loves it as well uh, the importance of uh, skills in uh, in today's day and age uh, is is uh, uh, i would say um, it it it's really kind of like shines you know because even when i interact with a lot of corporates uh, the biggest struggle that they have is yes we do we are getting the qualifications uh, that are, are needed uh, but they lack in certain specific skills uh, so uh, i think we are in a beautiful space and and even if i look at let's say data as far as you know even world economic forums uh, employment data is concerned so many important critical uh, skills that are required which aren't really available and these are people who are hiring who are putting this data together so that is hugely lacking and uh, we at fly hire are bringing those uh, skills to these children and to uh, several of our volunteers and several of the youths that we interact with 
so the future is bright in the sense that we are in a beautiful space, one. Uh, second is the fact that uh, the uh, since we've now been six years old, we are mm -hmm. churning out now kids who have taken, uh, participated in our programs and now are moving into, uh, let's say, you know, colleges or in, into jobs. So we see the kind of transformation Wonderful. that they've had on uh, in it as well. Uh, third is a lot of our volunteers are also uh, kind of like growing and become getting into better positions. So uh, personal development future is brighter well. because not only are they developing as persons, but also they are yeah. becoming uh, champions of uh, fly higher uh, and, and spreading the word for us uh, just as well. Yeah. So yeah. yes, uh, it, it's a very bright future. We want to just continue doing what we're doing and do it better. Uh, and uh, keep meeting people like you who inspire us and probably... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's like a pat on our shoulder that you would want to interview somebody from Fly Higher because probably we are doing some good work. So yes, and so, all the credit no. goes to the entire and beautiful team that we have. Uh, a big, big salute to all of them. Uh, without them, we are absolutely nothing. So yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, ta we at Trial Radio, we uh, specifically believe in highlighting nonprofits uh, who are doing wonderful job. Yeah. And um, I have had a, a wonderful time looking at uh, the Fly Higher Instagram page, which is uh, so many snippets, very heartwarming uh, reels. Even today, I came across one of uh, posted by one of the city leaders, yeah. and um, it quipped our interest and we were really you know looking forward to know a little bit more about your organization so thank you so much for being a part of this interview and um, to our listeners this is your host signing off thank you for tuning in to tal radio